Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are gonna to be talking about trends we were wrong about. This is interior design trends, home decor trends that have come and gone, that have, you know, we all thought were gonna be super popular and maybe had some staying power and we're gonna be here for a long time and then they just sort of didn't. A lot of people maybe kind of got really sick of them and now they're really looking kind of tired and not so awesome. Now, a couple of quick notes though. First of all, this is sometimes why, you know, I advise not always overspending on a lot of these trends because they look really, really popular. We all get sucked into the excitement and then all of a sudden they look really dated really quickly and this is why we shouldn't overspend on some of those trendy pieces and two is in the end if you still love these things even if they're like supposedly no longer as trendy as they once were that's okay still enjoy them I'm calling myself out for a good couple of these in this video that you can literally see in my background so like it's fine you know if you still get enjoyment out of them like I do I love my home you know I'm not here to throw those things out and uh, buy into the next new trend I'm still loving them I'm just here to report the new so don't get mad at me. Okay, but before we get to those trends that we were all wrong about, let me take a minute and thank today's sponsor, which is Ritual. Now, if you're not familiar with Ritual, they're an online company that ships high quality, amazing supplements directly to your home. It is a subscription, so you never forget to reorder because it just comes on a monthly basis, which is super convenient for me. So right now I am taking the multivitamin as well as the probiotic, but I've recently started incorporating in the essential protein into my diet. And that is just because it is vegan. It has an, all the essential amino acids, as well as it has no sugar. Sugar. It is also third-party tested, which is so, so, so important because let's be honest, especially with protein, there is like a lot of bro science out there. So Ritual has actually done the homework and made sure that it is third-party tested, which I love. So you can add the essential protein to a plant-based milk or water. I also find that I'm really enjoying throwing it into my green smoothie. It doesn't make it taste proteiny. It just sort of tastes a little bit creamy, which I really love. So go to ritual.com slash NickL20 and use code NickL20 for 20% off your first month subscription to Ritual. So thank you, Ritual, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to those trends that we were wrong about. Okay, so first on my list that people thought was really sort of trendy and we thought was going to stick around was sort of glossy, sort of really metallic-y cheap brass or cheap gold accessories. Okay, I'm guilty. Well, am I guilty? Yes, I am guilty of this. But here's the thing, in my defense and the defense of countless others who have bought into the excessively priced, we're not going to say cheap, we're going to say excessively priced, uh, brass or gold items. They're really fun. I really love gold as a metal. I think it's really warm and inviting. It's sort of my style, you know. I don't love chrome. I find it a little bit too cold for me. Um, I just really, really enjoy gold. But I will say that a lot of the cheap gold accessories and the cheap brass stuff, which was so prevalent over the last few years, is starting to look a bit tired because it's cheap. It's because it's fake and it's not real. And so I think we saw this this everywhere, especially in the glam style homes or even glam or shall I call it glam adjacent where people were adding a little bit of sparkle to their spaces with these gold accessories. They're starting to look a little bit tired at this point because again, which is a theme of this channel, which is that because we didn't invest in quality pieces, myself included sometimes, because we didn't invest in some like real brass that's going to actually patina and age gracefully and we went with sort of the cheaper stuff, it's starting to look a little bit like sort of the rhinestone stuff that we see at home goods. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's starting to get a show its age and so I think this is a trend that we all loved and we all bought in and thought you know what like brass this is just a timeless material which it is I think where we went wrong is some of the cheaper stuff and um lesson learned Okay, so the next interior design trend that we were wrong about, right? Trends that came that we all thought were super, super popular, but maybe, you know, died a swift death. Um, that is the reclaimed wood trend. So there was a time when sort of industrial, rustic, or even of course, farmhouse, we meet again, um, style was absolutely everywhere. And reclaimed wood was a really, really big part of sort of that rustic wood style that really fit with industrial or farmhouse because it kind of felt very lived in and so for that reason I think as a trend we thought it was going to be something that was going to last a really long time because it held the makings of it being a great trend or something that felt like there was a certain timeless quality to reclaimed wood right because it's rustic yes but it's a natural material feels a bit lived in I think people thought that it was going to be a trend that would be with us for many many years it's not there anymore and I think the problem there is going to be several reasons first of all it's the sense of place that is sometimes missing from reclaimed wood. Ultimately, you know, I've told this to the farmhouse people so many times, but you probably 
don't live in a farm. Unless you do live in a farm, in which case, good for you. You can just go live in a farm and you know, whatever. I doubt you have live, love, love on your walls, but you can go have your farmhouse and that's cool. And you can do your things, put up your shiplap, get your reclaimed wood because you literally took down a barn and then made, I don't know, a table out of it. You go have at it. But if you live in an urban or suburban environment, the reclaimed wood came from a barn, maybe from like, I don't know, 500 kilometers away. Like, I don't know where this stupid barn came from, but that's where the wood ultimately came from. So there was a sense of place that just didn't feel like it fit. So it looked like it was gonna feel really cool and timeless forever, ultimately felt very trendy and of the moment and fell flat because of the missing sort of sense of place that you get for reclaimed wood in an urban or a suburban sort of house, like which is where probably you live. And ultimately the thing is with poor reclaimed wood is that reclaimed wood was really synonymous with some very specific design styles that for a host of other reasons just didn't make sense anymore and sort of kind of came and went and became so ubiquitous, so popular, so everywhere that ultimately people got sick of it and that sort of led for it to be less popular than it once was. So the other thing too with reclaimed wood, which I personally can't speak to because I've never really thought about this and experienced it, but other people have told me that reclaimed wood is also just just not great wood to put in your home. There are issues around smell. What? Apparently, are issues with reclaimed wood over the long term, which um, bothers me a lot, but that's something that is there and people should be aware of. So, you know, again, all the makings of a wonderful trend. Oops, maybe we didn't think this through. And so maybe quite possibly dredging up some 80 year old wood that fell out of a, I don't know, that's sitting in a swamp somewhere and then, you know, hosing it down and then turning it into a barn door and then sticking it in your home on like your bathroom door or something, problematic. That's what I'm saying. So yes, reclaimed wood, great in theory, thought it was a wonderful trend, thought, it, well, I didn't, but some people did, and because it's just not my style, but like some people really loved that trend and thought it was timeless, here to stay, it was gonna be here forever because it had all the sort of makings of a great trend. But I think for those few reasons that I just gave, um, ultimately was just not here to last and we were wrong. We thought it was great and it turned out Maybe not as so much. Okay, next on my list, trends that we were wrong about, trends that I was wrong about, is the really brightly colored terrazzo. So, still kind of love this, I'm not gonna lie. I think there's some really creative sort of use cases for this stuff that I actually still really enjoy. I, I did a video, I think about a couple of years ago now, early on, called like Trends I Love, where I was talking about 2021 design trends that were coming down the road that I really enjoyed. And this terrazzo was one of them. And it's because I think it is kind of fun and it is kind of an interesting sort of alternative to kind of the statement marble or the really beautiful, gorgeous marbles that we all love. but. This just was something that was really bold and funky and fun and weird and interesting and cool and colorful. And I think we all really sort of fell in love with that and thought like, yes, this is a trend that's amazing. It's gonna be here for years to come because terrazzo is timeless. We were like, we told ourselves about how in Italy they had terrazzo for centuries. Yeah. But I think some of the really funfetti stuff started to look a little juvenile and sort of started to go the route that we saw with marble, which is where a lot of it was getting really faked and it started to just look like it was a manufactured product and not in any way sort of the chic timeless terrazzo that we have seen in decades past, right? So this is not the stuff that I'm talking about that was sort of on, you know, the kind of the floor of like a bed or a library and like a really beautiful sort of old traditional style. It's not what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about the really bold, colorful, kooky, crazy stuff that is fun, let's be honest, but it was a trend that kind of came with us and uh, left us maybe just as quickly. And that's mostly just because, you know, it doesn't have the subtle, timeless quality that we expect from a lot of terrazzo or from another natural stone. I do still think though, for the record, that it is like a fun pattern and a fun stuff. So I'm not gonna say it's a trend I don't like. I'm just gonna say this was a trend and now it's not so trendy, which is, doesn't mean it get bad. Again, it just makes it something that you might wanna just take a sober second thought before you, you know, necessarily put in your home. I would actually like, if I still had like a fixed element of like a patio or something, or I was, you know, interested in getting some slabs, some concrete, I still would consider this because I still think it's super cool. But as a trend and advising it and seeing it putting into people's own homes, I think it's, it's kind of come and gone. And of course, I'm gonna add to that things like the terrazzo pillows, the terrazzo water bottles, the like terrazzo print 
on top of sort of home decor items. So we're not talking about sort of the concrete that has chips of different sort of natural stones or even the terrazzo those little different colored pieces of concrete to create that sort of effect. Uh, we're talking about like print, like just straight up like printed contact paper stuff. Like that is fine and fun, but it is a temporary solution and one that is not obviously going to be as time tested as going with something like, you know, like a natural stone, which is to me is always gonna be more, more timeless. Okay, and then next up is the lantern pendants. I feel like this, the reason I put this on this list is because I think there was a time 2015, we'll call it, where this was sort of like what everybody seemed to be putting in to their homes, their new builds, their renovations in their kitchen over top of their kitchen island or their peninsula, right? Like you can't look at a real estate listing from a house that was renovated five, six, seven years ago and not see the lantern style open light bulb sort of pendant that you see that is very, 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 very popular or at least was. And that's the thing. It felt so much like a trend that it felt like it was just never going away. Like it felt like it was just, it was in the farmhouse look. It was definitely a big part of the farmhouse aesthetic but even more of transitional spaces more like sort of classic elegant designs even then this lantern style pendant was everywhere it was all over the place to the point that it was so ubiquitous that it was like this thing is never going away this maybe this is a timeless lighting fixture but i think now that we've had some distance i think it's good to look back at those and i think we can see that they were really just a trend they were bought into a certain aesthetic that was very popular but i feel like now that we've had a little bit of time away from it, I feel like it is very locked into a certain period and a certain design style that has started to look a little bit more dated because it was sort of a real like product of the time. It was just very ubiquitous, very popular, very everywhere for a good several years. And for a lot of people, it started out as like a really amazing trend that was like, yeah, this is going to be the light fixture forever, has now started to look a little bit on the dated side. And I'll also add, I think a lot of people don't love open style pendants, period, including I get lots of comments and I comments about my pendant over my dining room table. I don't care. I like them. Unpopular opinion as it may be, I actually don't mind the look of an open light bulb with a funky Edison bulb or something in it. I actually think that's kind of cool. But again, a lot of people disagree with me and think that is a dated trend. Everybody's got their opinion. That's fine. And I think the lighthouse pendant sort of gets lumped in with that as well, where a lot of people just are kind of tired of these open glass pendants. And they're really looking for more of a shade that is going to diffuse light and also make it so that uh, it's easier to look at it's sort of easier on the eyes in the home because again it's going to be diffusing light so i do understand that perspective i still like a lot of these open pendants because i think they're kind of cool but the lantern that is definitely one that is starting to show its age okay the next interior design trend that we thought would last but maybe didn't is the all gray everything gray flooring gray furniture gray paint on the walls right gray ceiling gray decor gray 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 maybe you might throw in some silver which is basically just the metallic gray but all in all the all gray look right so here's why I think that we, maybe that trend felt like it was going to go on forever and maybe, you know, we were wrong and thought that it was going to last a lot longer than it kind of did because now it is very much looking really dated. So here's the thing. I think it's because gray is just a neutral like black and white like it's really just the mix of black and white so gray there's nothing wrong with gray specifically like gray as a color choice is fine it's a beautiful neutral it's a great neutral people hate on the gray for what reasons i'll get to in a second but gray as a color is perfectly fine it is like black like white it's fine but i think the all gray everything oftentimes has a blue or silvery undertone to it, which makes it feel really cold. And when you do gray on gray on gray on gray, it starts to look very impersonal, very chilly, very unwelcoming, and very sterile in a way that sort of the all white look also kind of feels a little bit that way. But even the all white look oftentimes had a little bit of a warm, creamy undertone to it. Gray is just like cold, cold, cold. And you just see that all the time where these gray looks ultimately don't feel very homey and they feel very staged and they just don't look inviting. The other thing with the all gray everything is wood. So wood, especially hardwood flooring, is a, obviously it's a natural material that is used all the time in interior design. And when talking about flooring specifically, where hardwood floors, at least here in North America, are still very, very popular and have been for many, many, many years. And I'm including wood effect, so like vinyl plank, I'm including laminate in this conversation as well. So the problem with having the all gray hardwood hardwood floor is that wood does not come in that color, right? Like, I feel like we need a lesson here, right? Like wood can have 
r cherry red undertones. It can have like be really blonde and creamy and yellow, like oak or ash even. Uh, you know, cherry, mahogany, those are all gonna have red undertones to them. You can have wood that's got like a really rich chocolatey color, like walnut, for example. So wood will come in different sorts of shades, but it's inherently always always going to be on the warmer side. You might find some woods that have like a slight yellow undertone with maybe a little bit of a green undertone into it, but for the most part, they're always going to be on the warmer side. So gray is finish, right? Gray is going to be gray washed and you're going to take wood and you're going to turn it gray. It never feels natural and it never feels comfortable and it sort of takes a natural product and morphs it into something that feels very manufactured and very man-made. And therefore, I think that really adds to the all gray trend, not feeling very timeless and feeling very forced and locked into that specific period because it just ultimately was just too unfriendly and too cold and uninviting to stand the test of time. Okay, so that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm gonna throw it here to my video of trends that I don't think will last. And also I'm gonna throw to another video, which is trends I think will last. So I just did these a few weeks ago and I think they're really just me peering into my crystal ball and making some predictions, kind of like this video, except in this video I had the gift of hindsight, but I'm looking forward on those ones uh, to see which ones I think are gonna last and which ones will not. So I'll see you all in that video. Thanks, bye.